with your host, Mark Kepler. Welcome back. The governor and the legislature attempted to tackle some pretty big issues in 2007, from reforming health care to ensuring reliable future water supplies. Yet compromise on these issues has proven difficult. Valley legislators, however, have a long history of working in a bipartisan manner and have proven adept at knowing where a compromise can be found. Three of them are with us today. Assemblymember Nicole Parr, Democrat from Hanford, Assembly Minority Leader Mike Velines from Clovis, and Assemblymember Juana Ramula from Fresno. Welcome to all of you. You know, one of the issues that seems to have valley-wide bipartisan support uh, is the issue of water and specifically dam surface storage uh, to deal with future water needs. Senator Cogda was going to be with us this evening. Um, unfortunately, he's involved in negotiations in Sacramento, so I'm actually going to put the first question to you, Assemblymember Velines. Sure. Um, it seems that people are now agreeing on surface storage, that that's a need. But there, there's a new sticking point that's emerged, and that is oversight. If and when the bond money comes due, how is that going to be appropriated? Should it be on an annual basis with legislative oversight, or should it be a continuous appropriation? What are your thoughts on that issue? Well, we, we feel strongly that it should be a continuous appropriation. And, and it, we really have gotten all these negotiations down to a few basic points. And one of them is, if you believe water storage is important, and if you believe conveyance is important, and the delta being strong, uh, you know, then do we agree that we would do a what we call continuous appropriation, which means only two thirds of the legislature getting together could change any of that, and that's really a protection built in. Uh, we feel strong that that has to be there, and we can't seem to get that in right now. So that's been a major sticking point in the negotiation. That's probably what Senator Cogdell is working on uh, this at this very I moment. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, Senator uh, Parra, in June you hosted a water roundtable that discussed uh, water quality, reliability, and availability in the uh, southern San Joaquin Valley. How would the bond uh, money that we're talking about address those concerns that were raised at that roundtable? We met with a lot of fo folks from the Department of Water Resources, a lot of the smaller communities. Uh, we had folks from uh, Alpa, Huron, Tulare County, and water quality is a huge issue, and especially in the bonds when you're looking to see clean drinking water, safe water for communities to to uh, have for their families and the communities because many of the communities in the valley are still relying on wells mm -hmm. and with them one water well goes down uh, that's it for the whole town and we learned that lesson from Alpa so we brought up about a hundred people and it's very important that the folks from the valley those who are in the smaller towns meet with the state agency folks who are actually we vote on the bonds but it's really the agency folks who are at the implementation level so when we're talking about the big macro issues of conveyance and water storage we still cannot forget the issues of water Water quality. What comes out of the tap when people are trying to drink water, take you know their showers, and but again, most importantly, you know, drink clean water. So yes, I did have a town hall in June, and I also had a water meeting out at Harris Ranch on the west side where we had a conference call with the speaker and John Laird, uh, talking about the importance of storage and also conveyance. And I know you saw a clip of the speaker saying that he doesn't agree with subsidizing some storage issues, but let me tell you, the speakers come a long way on some of these issues, especially on the conveyance and storage, and has met with a lot of our folks from the Valley. In fact, last week we met with him in Sacramento. So, you know, we're close. I agree with this, uh, you know, Assembly Member Mike Velines. It's unfortunate that we do have this one issue on the continuing authorization. Well, let me ask, let me ask uh, Assemblymember Velines another question. I understand you're working with the governor on how best to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars that were approved by the voters in Propositions 50, 84, and 1E. Um, if, no pun intended here, if that money is already in the pipeline, uh, do we need another $10 billion to take care of water? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. It's a very legitimate point. <clears throat> we think it's about $9 billion. It's unallocated at this point or unspent. We're looking at passing a bond from 7 to $10 billion right now. I mean, we could actually step back and say, let's use existing dollars and put it towards what we're talking about. It may be that we end up doing that if we can't get to a consensus right now on the overall water package. But, but the point that it, in those propositions Californians voted. They said, we want clean water for drinking, as, as uh, some woman Parra has said, or we want it for um, you know, conveyance for whatever it is, or we want it you know, for storage. They voted for certain specific issues, and then we come back and they don't get used for that. That's why the public doesn't trust us. That's why a two-third protection is so critical to this overall negotiation right now, and we have to have that or we can't go forward. You know, I, don't want to, I want to ask Assemblyman Rambula, uh, you know, the water deal we're talking about is 9 or $10 billion. Last November, the voters approved $42 billion in bonds. Now we're hearing that there may be a $10 billion deficit next year. In light of the spending that's already we're already committed to and the potential $10 billion deficit, is a $10 billion water bond a wise investment at this time? Well, if you want uh, to have reliable, clean supplies of water, it is a good investment. Uh, can we pay for it? 
uh, this coming budget year is going to be a very, very difficult year. Uh, the, the most difficult, I think, of, of all the ones that I've been there, and uh, okay. I think my, my yeah. colleagues would agree. <coughs> but the expenditure of these funds uh, would not come due for several years. The Legislative Analyst's Office, the nonpartisan uh, uh, department that uh, provides us with uh, information on budget forecasts and revenues, has told us that the next two or three years for the state will be the most difficult. After that, our debt obligations will decline significantly. So if we can time the bond uh, proceeds uh, to be used uh, over the next couple of years, then we should be able to absorb the repayment. Thanks. Well, up next, we're going to discuss health care, the other major issue that was consumed much of Sacramento's attention this year, and the state's impending budget shortfall, the issue that is sure to consume much of Sacramento's attention next year. This is the Matty Report.